Good morning, folks. Let's begin with a review. Half of the Starwater series made a point of the stellar water production capabilities, raw material distribution centers that may not be as scorching hot and elementally uniform as our parents believed. We saw that solar wind contains traces of every known element. There's water on all the planets and moons, and in pre-planetary and pre-stellar nebulae. We've even found water vapor in sunspots of our very own star. And we've seen others cool enough to sip like coffee. Well, now we have an update. The coldest brown dwarf ever discovered, only 7.2 light years away. And it's the temperature of Earth's polar regions. That's right, frigid, below freezing. And given the facts of star water, I'll 99.99% promise you that that star has ice. End of story. Better story. Most of you know I'm a big fan of my fellow Columbus resident, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille. His speech on Kirchhoff's Law absolutely should change physics across a broad range, including our understanding of the microwave background. His latest speech on that topic posted yesterday to the Thunderbolts channel. It's of the top recommendation. Quick recap as our earthquake factors ramp back up the last two days, only to moderate levels, but it is what it is. Our uptick is moderate only, no seven pointers like the major uptick ten days ago, but we took another six pointer in the ring of fire, a couple mid-sized tremors off the US and Canadian coastlines, and one more ding up at the top of the world. The conditions told us the uptick would be medium range, and it has been. In the wake of the X-Class solar flare, we ramped up the Uyen system factors, and I was reminded that Dr. Uyen talks about quakes and sinkholes and tornadoes associated, not just the tropics. Well, the tropics are still calmer than one might expect, but that doesn't hold true for the remainder of the world. China, taking moderate tremor upticks this morning and had the worst cold event in six years, in April. While the cyclones held steady, the convergence gained a strong whip where it appears set to crest over New Zealand either tonight or tomorrow. The European system strengthened and headed out on his own, drawing a major convergence today while thunder continues to roll in the Mediterranean. And the tornadoes began dropping again in the United States last night. Local areas have declared emergencies as multiple structures were destroyed. And tonight's convergence is expected to be nasty as well. The line is west central now, but will swing east with the low tonight to create danger from Texas all the way north to the Canadian border. Big zone tonight. Situation on our star is relatively calm. We've had no big flaring, and the sunspot situation appears not ready to change that today. Alphas and betas only on the disk. There is more to the calm. Solar wind shows almost no variability and is completely within normal range despite slightly south pointing particles. We're calm. In terms of more coming, we saw a minor filament destabilize this morning and enter the current sheet, but it's unlikely to be perceptible in the telemetry days from now. Too small. We're indeed much more likely to notice the coronal hole stream. It was trans-equatorial, although it had only medium power, so the space weather should be medium. Last note, and boy I'm excited, this from April 20th represents my 100th solar pulse observation within a penumbra. By this, I mean I am timing the waves, the surges, the pulses, whatever we call them. Slight variation is had from morphing, growth, and decay, but I've never seen the pulse form outside of a 2-3 to three minute frequency. Never. This is the beginning of understanding the sun's version of a Schumann resonance. Coronal hole looks dark. Exiting. Should be a calm day on the sun unless the filaments release. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.